Bonjour, je m'appelle Nicolas Darcel. Hello, my name is Nicolas Darcel, and my research focuses on the neurobiological processes that are responsible for feelings of hunger and satiety. Et de satiété. Appetite control in humans is the subject of numerous studies these days, particularly because of the increase of the prevalence of obesity in many countries. In order to discuss appetite control, it is very important to define exactly what is meant. In fact, there are three key concepts, hunger, satiation and satiety. Hunger is the feeling that pushes an individual to consume food. It can then be observed that humans organize their food intake in discrete episodes, more simply called meals, and that satiation is the process that marks the end of a meal. From the moment that eating stops, a third process starts, called satiety, which is characterized by a prolonged inhibition of hunger. Signals that influence hunger and satiety are extremely varied and numerous. The signals described as sensory signals are produced by the passage of nutrients through the digestive tract. They can represent, for example, the detection of food composition in the intestine. It is known that the presence of protein in the digestive tract, notably in the intestine, is a powerful inhibitor of hunger, indeed a more potent inhibitor than lipids or carbohydrates. There are also metabolic signals that indicate the physiological state of the individual, such as time passed since the previous meal. There are also cognitive signals, mood, the search for pleasure, or memory of past experiences can influence hunger, satiation, and satiety. Today, not everything is known about how the brain produces these sensations. There are still many things that are overlooked, but a simple way to represent the problem is sorting the regions of the brain into three general parts. The first part is a macrostructure called the brainstem, which receives information from the organism. It can be considered as a giant sensory system that receives two kinds of information. The first type of information is received during digestion when the food transits along the digestive tract. It promotes the appearance of satiation. The second type of information indicates the quantity of energy available for the organism. Both sets of information are important for the continuation of the satiety effect. The second part, called the reward system, produces the motivation to eat. Without this part, there is no motivation to eat, no food pleasure and no food preferences. Finally, a third part, belonging to the cerebral cortex, is responsible for the cognitive signals that often fall under superior brain functions, such as pleasure-reward processors or the recall of past events. <laughs>